Okay, in this particular video, I'm going to show uh, how to figure out whether or not something is a sonnet, as well as to be able to identify what makes it uh, iambic pentameter, generally speaking. So the poem I have here is uh, a favorite of many people. It is, um, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day, which is listed as sonnet number 18 by William Shakespeare. And uh, so what we're going to talk about is the, the structure of a Shakespearean sonnet. Shakespearean sonnets tend to have um, the same features over and over again. And a lot of times, too, the copy editor will uh, set a little indentation between uh, the last two lines, lines 13 and 14. But here's essentially how you know that it's a sonnet. Um, if you've ever read Thomas Foster's How to Read Literature Like a Professor, he says, if it's square, it's a sonnet. And uh, I, I like that, and it has given me thought for poems that I wouldn't have thought were before. But how do you know it's a sonnet? Well, the first key feature is how many lines does it have? So as I'm looking at this, I'm like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. As soon as you know that it has 14 lines, uh, it's probably a sign, but that's your first litmus test. The second thing that you have to do is, is, is it an iambic pentameter? So how do you know something is in iambic pentameter or not? Well, the best way to do it in, in, in layman's terms is to basically count the number of syllables. And so when I look at, at the first line of the poem, I'm like, shall I compare the two a summer's day? And when I count, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten syllables. And if I follow that pattern through the rest of the poem, I'll be like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 8, 9, 10. Same thing with the next line. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. And once again, it comes to 10. So it's 10 syllables in every single line in this poem. So generally speaking, that will probably make it iambic pentameter. Uh, now, people who actually study poetry for a living are probably pulling their uh, hair out because they're like, oh no, you need to figure out which ones are the stressed versus the unstressed. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess I could show people that, like, here you go. Shall I? Well, you have an unstressed followed by a stressed syllable. By the way, it's unstressed because of you over it, and then you label a stressed syllable with a carrot. Um, shall I compare the to uh, summer's day. And so what you notice is you have an unstressed followed by stress, unstressed followed by a stress, unstressed followed by stress, and you work your way through. And how many of those do you have per line? We have one, two, three, four, five. These are what are called iambic feet. Why are they called iambic feet? Well, it's because iambic, iamb, uh, the stressed syllable is not this one. This is the unstressed syllable. And iamb is uh, got the same structure as unstressed stress. So this is how you know it's an iamb. There's other types of what are called feet, these little sections in the in the lines, but we're not going to worry about all those different patterns uh, unless you become an English major and then you uh, have to uh, scrutinize the meter of every single line. Um, but we're not going to play that game today. I just wanted to make sure that we knew. So how do we know it's a sonnet? Once again, it has 14 lines. Uh, anytime you look at a poem, count the number of lines, it's got 14. It might be a sonnet. Count the number of syllables, 10 syllables per line. It's probably going to be a, a, a sonnet. The other litmus test then that you should look at is does it have a rhyme scheme? Um, does it have one? And so what we're going to kind of do, forgive the handwriting, but the pen function on this is kind of bad. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of color code uh, the rhyme pattern. So I look at the last line here, day, but eight doesn't rhyme with day, but may does. And if I work my way through, and I'm like temperate, 
and date. And yes, this is what is called an imperfect rhyme. Eight and or et and date don't exactly rhyme perfectly, but it doesn't matter because they have the right spelling. We go to shines and declines, and then uh, we pick this this red color, dimmed and trimmed, and then we've got uh, uh, orange for fade and shade. And I'll go back to this pink color, oest and growest. Then we come to the end of the poem, and we have what is called a couplet, C and D. So it does have a rhyme scheme. It does have a pattern to it. If we could actually label it, too, um, and we would assign letters to these things. Um, but this is a Shakespearean sonnet for a couple of reasons. Uh, first one is it's got um, what are called three quatrains. And you know that they're quatrains because they're set to four. Quatrain. Quatrain equals four. And what you'll notice, too, is that we have A, A, B, A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D. What I'm matching right now is the rhyme scheme of a Shakespearean sonnet. Uh, e, F. E, F, and then G, G. So we basically assigned a letter with the sound. So A is going to be A, 8 is going to be B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, and then G, G here at the bottom. So you know it's a Shakespearean sonnet because it has what are called three quatrains, and then at the end it has a couplet. So what we did here is we kind of looked at what is known as a sonnet. In particular, it's a Shakespearean sonnet, and I'm going to go to the next thing because we have a quatrain, and we have a quatrain, and then we have a couplet. We know that it's 14 lines because we counted them. We know that there were 10 syllables per line. And then it had a strict rhyme scheme that followed this. So you know it's a, it's a sonnet when it has that, and it has something like that, and it has a rhyme scheme. Um, and the last thing that I want to say about uh, sonnets and um, how you can identify them as well is as soon as you see that it's got 14 lines, it should immediately be an alert to you. But at the same time, too, um, Pay close attention to then, like, four, and then we have a period, and then we have a semicolon, and then we have a period. So you'll notice that there's a hard stop at the end of each of the quatrains. Well, what were we studying here? When we were looking at the syllables, the thing that we were looking at is meter. The type of meter that it is is iambic pentameter. And this is the definition of a Shakespearean sonnet. Uh, quatrain, 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 and couplet. So I hope this was informative, but you should be able to see a, a, a sonnet uh, by sight simply by, does it have 14 lines? Do we see 10 syllables per line? Does it have a tight rhyme scheme? And you know it's a Shakespearean one when it has these quatrains uh, along with the couplet. Good luck.